Welcome back to another episode of Crosses and Graces. Thank you for joining me here as we talk today about obedience. So it seemed like a relevant topic considering the previous video. So now we're going to look at how we can be obedient and do everything that we're told to do to make sure that we can be virtuous for God. So before we get started here, I want to make sure to thank all of you for joining us. Please subscribe to the Restoring the Faith channel if it helps you. Please subscribe to the Ecumen channel as well. And make sure to uh, like this video if it helps you in any way, shape, or form, and share it wherever you can if you think that it could be of use to other people as they go and try to be the best Catholics they can be. And all together, we can do what we need to do for the glory of God. Awesome. All right. So without further ado, so following up on last episode, like I said, obedience, it's huge. It's the essence of what we are as Catholics, the foundation of our faith. Now, it is the difference in all seriousness between Protestants and Catholics. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we continue forward. Um, but for the moment, the main thing that we need to emphasize here is obedience is essential for Catholics, not just to God, because we all know God top notch. He's the head of everything and we follow him and do whatever he says. But when God allows other people to have authority, so whether that is a president whether that is a mayor, whether that is a police officer, whether that is your boss, or whether that is bishops, a pope, what have you, there is obedience to them that we owe them because God has granted that authority and said that it's legitimate, at least so long as they allow us to worship like Catholics to do what he told us we need to do. God has rights. Our job with obedience is to acknowledge the rights of individuals or at least the powers that they have so that everything can remain in a right order. Now, we have an obligation to do everything God said. Matthew 28, 20, follow every commandment he gave us. Now, that means then if we reject, so this is focusing on church authority here. If we reject church authority, we reject God. This is not me saying it. This is what God himself said in Luke 10, 16. All those who reject you reject me. And I know Protestants want to act like that means that it's everybody out there. And I hear you at some level, there is a truth in that part of that means that yes, anyone who rejects the Christian message that either you or I or any one of us actually go and share, that's true, they're rejecting God, but also if we reject the authority that God rightfully instills in men, whether that is, like I said, as part of a country, a family, or a church, if we reject that, well, then we're also rejecting God there too. And then that means we can't be perfect like he told us to be in Matthew 548. That seems like a big deal. All right. So what I'm trying to make sure we're all clear on here. Obedience is mandatory. You cannot be with God and be disobedient. All right. It's very straightforward. Thomas Aquinas discusses the virtue that is piety in part two of the Summa Theologiae. And that is questions 101 and 121. And he is one of the ones who builds on that whole authority and rightful authority and how we who are in submission to that authority must be obedient and says that the authority of God does extend into other men. So we can't sit there and say, well, I won't bend a knee to another man. That means that we're not acknowledging the fact that God allowed another man to have power over us. That is God's will, whether it be active or permissive, regardless, it's not up for us to choose who's in charge. God does that. Now, if we have the ability to vote in an election, sure, then we go and we help and we go and put in our two cents. But if there's a king, if there's your parents, all of these people or your boss, even you don't get to choose who your boss is. You can choose which company maybe you work for. But after that, your boss is your boss, period. You can't sit there and go, I don't like my boss. I reject him. Well, if we're going to reject men in front of us, our parents, our bosses or God or our prelates, our bishops, that's bad. Okay. Now, we don't get to choose which parts of Christianity we accept and which ones we don't. Okay. This is not a buffet line. And by the same token, that means we don't get to choose the authorities, like I was saying, of what 
is an authority over us and what is not. If God has said it there, it is true. Okay. And this is where Protestantism starts to come into the uh, crosshairs here. Protestantism picks and chooses in scripture, which verses they want to follow and which ones they don't, which interpretation they wish to use and which one they don't, which means they're now going to choose which authority they think is valid and which one they think is invalid. And then what they're doing now is then turning themselves into the judge, the arbiter themselves, the individual to be their own Pope. In the end, what it means is they're actually then now rejecting the right order that God has set above them to sit there and say, no, no, I'll choose it myself because I have a book. That book, that scripture came from the Catholic Church. It was directed by Pope Damasus, by the way, in 382. And it was Catholics who assembled it. It was in council, by the way, in Rome in 382, Hippo in 393, in Carthage in 397. The church, rightful authorities. We Catholics, as St. Augustine says, acknowledge the authority of Scripture because of the church behind it, not because of the Scripture itself, okay? So when we are obedient, we must be obedient to the authority. Now, that means we're focusing on God's rights, not our rights. We cannot sit there and choose not to worship him, not to acknowledge his truth or his church. Anything we start to go and throw away um, or reject of him, we're going to pay for that. That's sinful. A government that we belong to, when they do that and keep us from worshiping, this becomes a problem. And so this is the thing that I'm going to kind of close on here. There are times when we don't have to be, we'll go with obedient. Okay. So although it may seem right ordered that someone a king, a president, a boss, a parent, a prelate can order us to do something. There are times when those orders are illegitimate because they deny the rights of God. Okay. So although I'm going to say obedience is essential, obedience to God first, everyone else second. So if someone else tells you, and I don't care whether it's a pope or it's a bishop or it's a president, it's a king, it's a boss, it's a parent, and they tell you to do something that is unchristian from the standpoint of they told you to murder someone, they told you to steal from someone, they told you to lie, they told you to just burn a little bit of incense to these other gods, whatever it is, if they tell you to do that and it denies God his rights, we have an obligation to say, nope, obedient to God first. I can't uh, follow that order. It's illegitimate. And in that sense, this is why we can look at the Spanish and the Reconquista. So from 700-ish, middle 700s, all the way out to uh, the late 1400s, when the Spanish reconquered Spain for the glory of God, kicking the Muslims out, okay? They were counter-revolutionaries. They were not revolutionaries taking out a rightful authority. No, because the authority that was there was denying Catholic worship. Can't allow that. Same thing with the Vendée in France. Now, they had a much less successful outcome, but were they right in fighting back against Republican forces in France? Absolutely, they were right in fighting against the Republican forces because they had denied, and this is the Republican government in France, the revolutionary government, had denied Catholic worship. And by the same token, other counter-revolutionaries were the Mexicans, the Cristeros, who did the same thing when the Federale forces actually started rejecting Catholic teachings, murdering Catholics, and denying our ability, Catholic ability, to worship in that country in that time frame. Okay? So... The Reconquista, the Vende, and the Cristeros are great examples of counter-revolutionaries who made the decision to worship God first and not deny him his due, okay? So they were not rebels, they were counter-rebels. Satan is rebellious, okay? All those who decide they want to turn against rightful authorities are rebels. We cannot be rebels. The only way we get to heaven is we have to be obedient, and I don't mean follow bad orders. So if someone tells me there's no one in hell, I don't have to believe it. And if someone tells me I need to go support charities that do things that are against right order, the nature of God, God's commandments as beatitudes, what have you, we don't have to do that. Okay. So obedience is about following right orders. And if your parents tell you to do something that's legitimate, well, they're still parents. So we help them. All right. Your boss tells you to do something legitimate. I don't have to like it, but I have to be obedient. Okay, top to bottom. So we have to do everything that's obedient in line with God. 
and the stuff that's against God, we say no to, and we still then can be obedient without sin. All right. Does that kind of make sense? Hopefully it all fits together for you guys out there. If you have comments, questions in terms of all this, please tell me, but please join me in obedience. Let's be good Catholics and show people how to submit to rightful authorities when it's there and then how to reject stuff that's illegitimate against God. We don't want to do that. All right. You all with me? All right. Thank you for your time. I hope this video was helpful. And again, please subscribe to the Restoring the Faith channel, subscribe to the Ecumen channel, like this video if it helps you, and share it with everyone out there so we can continue to educate people on how to be good Catholics. So thank you for everything. May God bless you all. And again, I really do appreciate your time. And uh, St. Joseph, pray for us and have a good one in the meantime. Take care.